should have said at the end of six days. Yeah, I just, I just, I threw you up to the open. Okay. <laughs> well, let's, I'll get, I'll ask for your opening statement and then I'll take the toast and get the questions for you. Is that all right? Sure. <coughs> Give us a little coach. We'll go ahead and get started with Coach Pearl. Uh, and thank him for his patience. Um, we'll ask for his opening statement and his players, uh, student athletes join us. We'll uh, jump to questions for them. Um, I'll make a couple of quick reminders. Uh, please silence your cell phones as a courtesy to those working in this area. Um, as you're going to ask a question, please provide your name and media affiliation each time. Um, you can get a question by raising your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. So. Um, uh, if you'd wait till the microphone gets here, that's great. Uh, if you're joining on Zoom, please uh, raise your hand. Use the raise hand function, and we'll address those questions if time allows. Uh, recording press conferences on cell phones and cameras in this area is prohibited. The audio and video will be available on the NCAA.com media hub um, once we're completed here. And when student athletes join us, if you could direct questions to specific student athletes, that helps our audio folks. Um, Coach, if you want to give us an opening statement. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I'd like to congratulate Yale on a great, uh, a great victory. Um, we respected our opponent. We played them a couple years ago, and uh, they played us tough, and we knew exactly what we're you know, getting ourselves into. We knew we'd have to play well uh, to win. Um, we, we did not take good care of the ball. We turned it over too much. Um, and... Um, um, but it was it was a great game. Obviously, um, they made big shots, and um, um, you know John got hot, and uh, we just we just couldn't guard him. Um, he made some big plays and, and and big buckets, and that's what you know that's what guys got to do um, at the end of at the end of things. I'm going to go ahead and finish. Oh, I'm sorry. The, uh, um, we were in foul trouble um, from the very beginning. Uh, obviously, uh, the decision to flagrant two, um, you know, Chad Baker, that's a, that's a pretty tough call. Um, he had gotten hit about five seconds earlier, got tangled up, got a little bit of an elbow, they let it go, maybe nobody saw it, and about five seconds later, Chad hit him, it was inappropriate. Um, clearly a flagrant one. The fact that it was elevated to a flagrant two is a decision that the official had to make, but it's obviously a tremendous impact on the, on the outcome. Chad is one of our best players. He's uh, one of our very best playmakers, and uh, was a huge part of um, our game plan, and so to lose him in that situation was uh, was really, really disruptive to our team on both ends of the floor. All right, let's uh, have questions for student athletes. We have uh, Chris Moore, Denver Jones, and Jalen Williams with us, and if you could uh, direct questions to specific student athletes, we'll start right over here. Ben Robb, Yale Daily News. For all the players, um, you know, playing against Yale, the Ivy League, hasn't been to this tournament many times before. Did you guys expect this team to come out with so much grit and determination? Chris? Yes, we did. Um, we know it's March Madness. We know what, you know what the situation is. Everybody playing like the life depended on it. And, you know, hats out to those guys. I mean, they played a, a, very, a very great game. Denver? Yeah, I mean, we expected them to come out, uh, make shots tonight. Uh, obviously, down the stretch, they made uh, they made some good plays. They ended up putting them over the hump for at the end. Jalen. So we know um, they won their league, so they came in this tournament with a lot of confidence, especially um, you know first round playing against Auburn. A lot of people probably didn't think they were gonna win the game, so like they came in the game with a different step in their and their movements and making shots, and um, they just play very well tonight. Uh, for Jalen, uh, obviously a disappointing loss, but can you talk about your time at Auburn and what it's meant to you 
to be an Auburn Tiger and, and to be able to play with these guys this year? Yeah, so my whole time being here, I, you know, I've been on about 10 different teams since I've been here. So, but this team is very special. You know, we all get along, we all hang out, we all do all type of like different activities together, play the game, get along. We always stuck together, no matter what. Uh, even today at the locker room, we we knew what we could have done better, but um, we stuck together still to this day. And hopefully, when I'm gone, like I still stay in touch with these guys, and it's gonna be my best friends forever, the rest of my life. So, Justin Ferguson, Auburn, Denver, for Denver, and Chris, just uh, number four for for Yale. Just talk about the challenges of guarding him, especially when he got hot like that you know, early in the second half. Uh, when you were put in that situation, honestly, you're just trying to uh, defend him the best you can, um, make every catch difficult for him, uh, make every shot difficult. But um, he hit some tough shots tonight. Um, obviously, that, that gave him a little bit of a run towards the end of the game. Um, he just had a great night tonight. Yeah, man, we, uh, we knew the scouting report, you know, when we was coming in the game. Uh, we stuck to it for the most part. But like Denver said, man, he made some big shots. and. He, um, you know, when, when guys making big shots like that, it's kind of hard to overcome, so. More questions for student athletes. Anything else? All right, we'll dismiss them, then return to questions for coach. Questions for Coach Pearl? We'll start right here. This group of guys and uh, what this season's kind of meant to you as a whole? You know, it's, it's tough to reflect on the season when, you know, you just go through one of the most disappointing losses in your career. Um, I've been in the 12 spot. I've, we've, we've had these great wins. I, I think this is the biggest upset uh, in the NCAA tournament that I think I've experienced. Um, I'm glad we lost to a really good team in Yale. Great kids, great coaches. Um, um, as a Jewish American coach, I'm really proud of Danny Wolf as uh, one of the best uh, Jewish basketball players in the country. Some people are afraid to sort of point that out, get uncomfortable with it. I'm just not, and so I'm proud of him. Um, but Auburn had a historic year. We were picked in the middle of our league. We wound up being one game out of first in the regular season. We got hot late. We, 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 the last game we lost, I think, was at Tennessee. Three weeks ago, I mean, four weeks. I mean, this is t this team has done so many great things. So I'm very proud of them. And like these guys said, they got along really, really well together, and um, um, they made history. It's their fourth. This is the fourth different team at Auburn that has won a championship in the last seven years. Two regular season, two tournaments. They they represented Auburn really well. On the aisle. Coach, throughout the season, you, you know, talk to us as the media and call basketball a game of matchups. How did you losing Chad Baker Mazzara, you know, change the way you matched up with Yale today? It, it, was, it was huge. Um, they have a great defensive guard in Bez. Bez is a great defensive guard. The the other guards are better offensively than they are defensively, and so, you know. Um, Denver Jones had a, had a really good offensive game, but we needed that other guard out there offensively. Um, Denver was a little bit under the weather. He had to play through that, and so he wound up playing more minutes under the weather, and Chris Moore to play more minutes, and um, KD had to play more minutes. So um, we just weren't as 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 you know as deep or as fresh. Um, I don't think they, I think they, they took a shot at Chad, they hit him, and he retaliated. Can't retaliate. But they hit him first. Bruce, uh, Tim Booth with the AP. Did you get, two questions, did you get any explanation from the refs why it was elevated from a one to a two? Well, I think per perhaps a couple of words, you know, the fact that it was serious maybe, or intentional. You know, Chad lined him up and retaliated, so by book or if that's the wording they'll use as a flagrant too, but it's uh, had a huge impact on the game and 
I don't think any, I think if he called it a flagrant run, I don't think anyone, it was a flagrant one. He intentionally, it was excessive. It was, how many flagrant twos are there in games versus flagrant ones? That's a big good discussion. Let's just say of all the flagrants, in my experience, 90% maybe once, maybe. 10%. Tough, tough to get here after all year long. You know, I don't even, I don't even know if we had a flagrant two all year. Is, was, was Broom okay there at the end? I kind of got caught I, I don't know. Scramble. I don't know. He, uh, he got tangled up pretty good there, didn't he? But Janai had a great, had a great year, carried this team, uh, particularly the offensive end, improved tremendously defensively. Uh, we were, we were, we rely on him a great deal. And, uh, he, uh, He's one of the best centers in all of college basketball as an All-American. Bruce, you're up, with, you're up by 10 with seven and a half to go. And, and you know, the offense, a lot of turnovers, missed shots. What do you think the biggest difference was? Was it something that Yale started doing differently or what you, you guys were doing differently just for the offense to cool off like that down the stretch? Well, we, you know, we turned it over. And, that, and I think that was probably the, probably the biggest takeaway. Um, we did not get a ton of easy ones. Um, we didn't, you know, kind of run without the ball. And, uh, um, you know, we put the ball in Chad's hands a lot late to make plays. And so we, we really, offensively, we lost a, a, you know, a huge breakdown guy for us. But I would say it's our turnovers. Yale played solid defensively. Um, you know, Mahomey was 9 for 11 from the foul line. Um, and so he was on the ground a lot. I'm going to be anxious to see how, uh, what those, what all the, and we just fouled him too much. You guys were 24 and 0 against non quadrant one opponents this year. You were blowing. I'm sorry. You were 24 and 0 against non quadrant one opponents this season. You've been blowing teams out all season. At what point did it become clear that this Yale team was not going to go away, even when you had, you know, 10 point leads? Yeah, I, well, we didn't expect them to go away ever, ever. Uh, listen. This was not, you know, it's funny, I heard Jay Bellis say some things today. Give Yale credit for making those plays. This has nothing to do with us not taking them seriously, nothing. They outplayed us in many, way, in many categories. They made shots, you know, they guard us. Um, they, 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 they know how to fall. You know, they know how to get the whistle to blow. And the, I mean, the whistle blowed a lot. They went to the line 31 times, it's a lot. Coach D. Jackson, CBS 42 in Birmingham. I, I know we've talked a lot about Chad, uh, but I was curious to know, in a game this close and with a player that has that much impact, what did you say to him to better himself? And number two, how do you use that as a teachable moment for the other guys going into next season as far as discipline? Yeah, we'll all, we all have to be accountable um, for, you know, for things. And we, we recognize that. I, I visited with him a bit at halftime, and he felt badly about it. And uh, wish he had a do-over, but you don't. You don't. You know. You don't punt it. You know, a lot of aspects in the game. Give Yale credit. They played great. They played defense. We turned the ball over too much, um, and uh, that's not the sky's the fact that we missed one of our best players. He's one of our top two or three players. Bruce, kind of an awkward question here, but you you guys won a lot of games by a lot of points this year. Didn't get into very many close games this season. Do you feel like down the stretch, the, the lack of close games played a part or, or, or what? I don't know. We missed a couple of free throws, but we got a couple of offensive rebounds on the free throw set. So that played into our hands. Um, got, us, got us to where we had a chance to win the game based on our, let's say, offensive free throw set execution. Um, so it'll be interesting to see in those last two shots with Janai on the ground, all the, all the contact that, that, that was there. We have one question on Zoom. Let's go to Dan Tortora on Zoom. Coach Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. You spoke about being picked where you were picked to start off the season and the success that your team had. 
I know that this is a rough patch moment, but when you reflect on this season, what are the positives that you take away from you as you build forward at Auburn? Well, I think that um, this was a team that our fans liked as much as any I've had in the 10 years I've been at Auburn. Like I would say the 2019 Final Four team, that was a special team, had a special run, certainly one of the great teams we've ever had, maybe the best team we've ever had at Auburn. Um, I think that uh, Walker Kessler and Jabari Smith's year, where we were number one in the country for about four weeks, and, and uh, um, won the regular season, didn't finish great that year, but that was a team I think that uh, I think people, our fans really enjoyed. They, our fans love this team. They love their energy, they love their passion, they love their emotion, they love the fact that they beat every team they were supposed to beat except tonight. We have um, time for one last question, we'll go right here. Uh, coach, um, you haven't lost many games shooting better than 51, 50 percent from the field, you got shot 51 percent from the field. Can you characterize for us, um, you know, where you felt the difference in the game was and kind of what made this different for you? Well, I think, you know, our second half defense wasn't as good. We didn't turn them over as much. We succumbed to fatigue a little bit. They made a bunch of shots offensively. We turned the ball over too much in the second half to win. All right. Thank you, Coach.